good evening. As you remain standing, let us pray. Lord, how wonderful are the works of your hand. As we gather here tonight to celebrate a step forward into new places with new people and new experiences, let us not forget the blessings that follow behind us. Lord, we have knowledge, so will you show us now how to use it wisely? Grant us faith and courage and put purpose in our days. Lord, let our education, our knowledge, and our skill find their true fulfillment. Let us never forget that knowledge comes from learning and wisdom comes from you. Amen. You may be seated. May I welcome all of you to our 2017 summer commencement. This is a special day as we recognize the achievement of our graduates. It is also a momentous time for our college as this year we celebrate our 50th anniversary. For 50 years, we have been helping people achieve their goals in life. However, today is your day, graduates. We are all proud of you. Continue to dedicate your life to learning and striving to be the best that you can be. Someone has said, we drink from wells we have not dug. This means that many people have helped you get to this point in life. So be sure to thank family, friends, and faculty for their support. Graduates, on behalf of the trustees, we wish you well. Good evening. My name is Mark Kenlaw, and I am the president of Rockingham Community College. I, too, would like to add my personal greetings to the audience and the graduates and welcome everyone to our 2017 summer commencement ceremony. This evening, we are gathered to honor the students of the summer graduating class of 2017. This is their day. Graduates, I, I extend to you my congratulations, and I want to thank you for selecting Rockingham Community College to further your education. I believe I can speak for all of our faculty, staff, and board of trustees in saying that it's been a privilege to be part of your life. You have done well and you have accomplished a lot. You have made it, but please understand learning is a lifelong process. Never stop learning. Always have the will to learn. Take what you have learned and go make a difference in the world. There are many here today that play a significant role in making our college what it is today and one that offers high quality programs that prepare our students for work and for transfer to a four-year university. They include our Board of Trustees who are seated on our stage, our faculty and our staff, our foundation, elected officials, public school personnel, and many throughout our county and region that support our college and make it one that has been so influential in our county for the last 50 years. Please help me recognize all of these that have supported our graduates and our college. I now have the pleasure of introducing our speakers for today's ceremony, Mr. Wayne Tuggle, who has been serving as mayor of the City of Eden since 2013. Mayor Tuggle is a lifelong resident of Rockingham County. He graduated from Stoneville High School in 1966. From there, he served in the military from 1968 to 1972 and is a Vietnam veteran who, where he served our, our country from 1969 to 1970. He earned his Associate in Arts degree from Rockingham Community College, his Bachelor of Arts degree and Master of Education degree from UNC Greensboro, and his Specialist in Education degree from Appalachian State University. Mayor Tuggle is a retired principal from the Rockingham and Guilford County School Districts. He was named Principal of the Year in Rockingham County. He has served on the Eden City Council since 2003, the last four years as mayor. Mayor Tuggle is married to Debbie and has three sons and six grandchildren. He is a strong supporter of education and of this college. I invite you to join me in welcoming to Rockingham Community College, Mr. Wayne Tuggle, Mayor of the City of Eden.
Good to be here tonight. Dr. Kinlaw, trustees, faculty, honored guests, parents, and graduates, I want to thank Dr. Kinlaw for the opportunity to speak at this commencement. I'm honored and at the same time humbled to be here tonight. I'm a lifelong resident of Rockingham County and a graduate of Rockingham Community College. I got my AA degree 43 years ago. Funny, isn't it? If you have time to think about life, it is a journey. I continue to enjoy the life I have been so graciously given. I'm not naive enough to think that you'll remember this commencement, but it's common belief that all graduates need to be properly sedated or stimulated before they go out into the world. You'll decide if this speech puts you to sleep or you find a nugget of inspiration today. So just for your information, I'm going to be nice and keep it to about a little less than 20 minutes. For you graduates, this diploma or degree fulfills a dream that you began years ago. You should be proud of yourselves. Your loved ones are elated. And for some of you, your parents are praying that you'll finally find a job. The truly exciting thing about your life today is that there is no more core curriculum. The rest of your life is an elective. I've always been curious about the psychology of people and why we do the things we do as human beings. Obviously, genetics and nurture play into the motivations of life, but to what extent, and I'm sure it varies for each one of us. If you listen to your immediate family, sports figures, teachers, fellow students, etc., you'll hear a story many times. It's a sad story. And if you look to your left, and you look to your right, you probably don't know very much about all the people sitting next to you. But every person sitting here today is totally unique and has a story. This ceremony is part of a chapter in your book of life and in no way tells the story of how you arrived and why you were motivated to set out on this journey. In the deep, dark recesses of your mind, very few know what, you really, what you've really gone through and the thought processes or what you've had to endure physically or mentally to get to this point in your life today. And, and you don't know the final chapter. You may have a surprise ending. I am the mayor of Eden, a former elementary, junior high, and high school principal. Through my personal experiences, I have dealt directly or indirectly with family death, the untimely death of students, suicide, depression, separation, divorce, abuse. I've been in a war, dealt with drugs, incarceration, bullying, segregation, poverty, etc., and every kind of pain through which a toxic environment can create a broken person or a broken spirit. Through it all, I was always amazed at how resilient the human spirit can be and how people approach life's obstacles. Whether it's war, family, or society in general, you might see one person internalize the pain, turn to alcohol, drugs, or crime, and spiral down the road of destruction, while another is able to use their personal demons as a driving force and springboard to achieving things they would never have thought possible. What makes the difference? And being rich does not guarantee your success any more than being poor guarantees your lack of success. I firmly believe there's an inexplicable spark in some people that drive them, drives them to achieve. Our lives are like a novel with many complicated chapters. Some chapters are hard, others are exciting. Some are boring, some have drama, and some triumphant, and some are just tragic. As you get my age, 68, you tend to reflect on life. You think about the meandering road of life you've taken, as well as the message in Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. You ask rhetorical questions like, why did this happen to me? I still don't understand much about life or that doesn't make sense, or why did I do that? You can get all the standard answers, but how can a child be born to this world of seven billion people and have every obstacle against them and another have every opportunity laid out for them? It doesn't make sense and there's not an adequate answer for the disparity in life. One thing is for sure, life is about choices and life is not fair. 
If you've lived, you have or will experience triumph and tragedy as well as all the gray areas in between. I don't know your story, but here's a glimpse of mine and some of the things I've learned along the way. Maybe some of you will hear this overview of my story and shades of my truth will hit home and make you think. I just want you to think. You'll decide for yourself. I was born in 1948, which is a long time ago, isn't it? In the spray section of Eden, and at the time, I didn't know it, but most everyone I knew was poor. I never knew my father because of his death at 45, and my hard-working, loving mother worked at Phil Crest Mills cutting blankets in the spray section of Eden. After my dad's death, my mother moved just outside of Stoneville. <coughs> We had an outhouse at my house until I was about 10 years old, no air conditioner, a black and white TV with three channels and rabbit ears. Telephones at that time were party lines. That's where multiple houses were on the same line and you had to wait until they stopped talking to make a call. That would never work today, would it? Instead of asking Siri or Alexa a question, you had to holler at Irene to tell her to get off the line so someone else could speak. Also, I worked in tobacco at an early age, and if you're from a previous generation living in Rockingham County, I don't have to explain. The early morning dew, the tobacco gum, and the first primings required bending over for hours. The tobacco rows seemed to go on forever. I even remember the mule who pulled the tobacco slides through the rows. Does that tell you how old I am? In other words, it was hot and hard work. I learned early that I didn't want to do that. I also learned early that having a great parent made up for much of the shortcomings in my life. I graduated in 1966 from Stoneville High School with an average, unremarkable academic record, and in large part, give credit, I give credit to my love of football, basketball, and baseball for giving me a reason to stay in school. I did laugh a lot, and I also thought everything was a joke when I was in school. Anybody out there feel the same way? But upon graduation, I simply had no idea what I was going to do the next day. I just lived from day to day. No direction, just day to day. I'm sure I was told at home and in school about planning for the future, but for some reason, I guess I was just one of those kids who never heard it. I worked in the textile mills for a while and attended Rockingham Community College. I enrolled in a machinist course in 1967. <coughs> There were wooden planks going between the buildings and worn out paths through the grass from building to building. RCC was in the first phase of its existence. The great Buddha once said, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I was not ready and just didn't have my life in order. Just enrolling in the class won't make the teacher appear. Again, I had no direction and wasn't satisfied working at working job to job or attending RCC, so I joined the military. What a dose of reality I got by joining the military. Looking back, that was a watershed moment in my life and one of the best decisions I've ever made. The four years of military service gave me direction, discipline, time to mature, something to occupy my mind, and an opportunity to get out of Rockingham County and see the world. I can't remember how many times I said, I gotta get out of this place. You ever said that? <clears throat> However, there was a caveat associated with the military and seeing another part of the world. You don't always get to choose your destination. Now here I am, a country boy straight off the set of Mayberry. I had barely been out of Rockingham County. I had never ridden a bus or flown on a plane and was about to take my first big trip. Just like Andy and Barney going to Mount Pilot, I, it was a really big deal. Well, my first big trip out of Rockingham County was to Vietnam. I was there in 1969 and 70. It was not like the John Wayne movies about war, and guess what? My mama didn't get to go with me. Believe me, culture shock was apparent when I saw the concertina wire, bunkers with manned 60 caliber machine guns, everyone dressed in fatigues, and actually heard the bombing and shooting for the first time. I remember the moment vividly. At Saigon, I started thinking seriously about my life, and I remember thinking, what in the world have I done? 
Your maturation process is like comparing the speed of a 1957 Ford to a new Corvette. I went from 20 years old to 40 overnight. These early lessons are instilled in my psyche to this day. I returned from Vietnam and married my high school sweetheart. It was a marriage of 40 years, three boys, and six, and six grandchildren over the journey. After getting out of the military, I enrolled at Rockingham Community College for the second time. I was older, more mature, was exposed to a new paradigm shift, and it was probably the second best decision I ever made in my life. For someone who did not have an academic, did not have any academic direction, the small classes, the cozy environment, and the great professors were the perfect springboard for a successful career. In addition, marriage and a bunch of children will certainly change your perspective really fast. It's not about you anymore. I was ready to learn unlike the previous time. The unquenchable fire to learn was lit right here at Rockingham Community College, and it's still here now. It's lasted a lifetime, and it started here at this community college. I graduated with an associate in arts degree and a solid background. I went from being an average student in high school to being an honor roll student throughout my academic career. I realized for the first time that I could be as smart as the next person. It was just a matter of confidence in your ability. High school can be a shallow experience that in no way gauges your academic potential. I eventually received an undergraduate and graduate degree from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro and a specialist degree in administration from, from Appalachian State. I spent six years in the public schools as a teacher and 24 as a principal. I've spent the last 14 years on the Eden City Council as a councilman and presently serve as mayor of the city of Eden. From growing up relatively poor to where I am today, there have been triumphs and tragedies along the way. The only constant in life is the personal and societal change we deal with. Life is like a river. You can only put your hand in it in the same place one time. I remember my grandmother, who was born in 1886, telling me about seeing the first horseless carriage. She lived to see a man land on the moon. And by the way, I also remember Uncle Fred and Uncle Bamboo talking about the moon landing. They thought it was a hoax and a conspiracy of the government. My first exposure to fake news. And yes, it is Uncle Bamboo. Don't act like you don't have weird nicknames in your family. This is Rockingham County. <laughs> I have seen the party line telephone evolve into the iPhone in three channels three-channel black and white TV with rabbit ears turn into cable with hundreds of channels and the ability to watch shows on an iPhone. That's a long way from the Lone Range and Tonto riding in on a black and white TV. My point is, with the technological revolution, there'll come a time when you'll seem as antiquated as you think your parents and grandparents are. Just as landlines and flip, flip, flip phones can only be found at your parents' and grandparents' house, if they even have a flip phone, you'll find that teens will always be on the cutting edge of technology before their elders. The change in your life as a member of the workforce will be, be as stark as the change I've seen in my lifetime. You will have to adjust throughout your career and compete, and it will take a willingness to study and learn. Following are 10 lessons I've learned in my life. Number one, don't let the past define who you are today. It's nice to visit the past, just don't live there. I saw things in Vietnam that a 20-year-old shouldn't see, and I've seen the pain that children and adults have to endure. Everyone here has had to deal with their pers own personal Vietnams or battles. You may have to grow up, you may have had to grow up witnessing or being subjected to things that a young person shouldn't have to endure. You will experience hurt until the day you die. Don't let the past control today. You're not in this world of hurt by yourself. Everyone just doesn't talk about it. Scars only show where we've been. They don't have to dictate where we're going. Number two, life is not fair. Being poor or not having a perfect environment will be a limit only if you let it. Don't be a victim and blame everyone else. The blame game is a losing strategy. Winners are the ones who move forward regardless of the circumstances. Fear strangles you. 
it creeps inside and it keeps you from taking that leap. Be a winner. Take the leap in spite of whatever circumstances you've grown up in. Have confidence in yourself and ignore the unsolicited personal attacks. Society is full of people who were poor or grew up under difficult conditions and went on to be very successful. It's not done overnight. It takes years. You'll be proud that you endured. Number three, tragedy will come. Keep moving forward when life is not fair. I lost my 45-year-old dad at four years old, and I lost my wife of 40 years to cancer in 2010. It's awful, and you will grieve, but everyone has to find their balance in life, and you have to live, but you do have a choice. You have to mentally compartmentalize certain aspects of your life and close the door. It will open periodically, but don't let tragedy control your future. We have to get out of our own way sometime. And by the way, even though my family dynamics were changed by cancer and the death of my wife, you never know what tomorrow brings. From out of the blue and the deep grief, Debbie came into my life and I remarried. Feeling sorry for yourself will just make you feel sorry for yourself. Number four, don't expect a free ride just because you have an education. Education just gets you to the door. You have to study hard and be a lifelong learner. Plant managers and CEOs continually tell me what they, that they just want someone who is willing to learn, can get to work on time, is willing to work hard, can get along with others, and who can pass a drug test. With study, you will be as smart as the next person. Receiving a title will not make you smart, and the title won't make good choices for you. Studying, making good decisions, and thinking rationally does. Number five, don't burn any bridges at work or in life. And be careful what you say or write when you're upset or mad. Don't forget the workplace you just left will get a call from the personnel department of the place you want to work. That call may be the determining factor in your future employment. Since this is a generation of social media and informational overload, learn to stay off social media if you're upset. Do you not think that a potential employer is not reading your drama on social media? You think not? Don't be surprised if someone is making a judgment about whether they want you to work for their company. Who asked to work beside a drama queen? <clears throat> this information is out there for everyone to read and it could define your life. It's too late to take it back once it's been posted or said. A drama or gossip site won't help your job opportunities. If you're looking for a job, start deleting tonight. <laughs> Confucius said, before embarking on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. Social media, the social media grave you're digging may be for yourself. Number six, you will likely experience disappointment and shortcomings. It is a part of life. Giving up is not an option. I've never believed in anyone failing. If you're told you're a failure enough, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. We simply produce a body of work as a father, mother, husband, wife, employee, student, and as a human being. Every aspect of our life is determined by this body of work. The harder you work at it, the more fulfilling it will become. Jobs and relationships are, intertwined, are an intertwined part of life. Number seven. There's always somebody trying to ruin your life. Do you know someone who always gripes or complains? Nothing is ever right and all they do is criticize? Might as well shake your head, yes, because everybody in here knows somebody like that. It seems they're always in opposition to something, nothing constructive. We all know these people. They know all the problems and never offer any solutions. Einstein said, great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. Changing anyone else is an exercise in futility. You'll finally figure out that you can only change yourself and your perspective. If you have a dream, then believe in yourself. It's your dream, not theirs. This is a saying that has served me well throughout my life. Every day of my life, someone comes into it with the purpose of ruining my life. If they ruin my life, it's my fault. These people will come, and you're the only one who determines whether they hurt your feelings or not. Number eight, 
Find a support, find a support system that you trust. Find a soulmate, not a sailmate. See if that makes any sense to you. <coughs> Surround yourself with doers. Be around people who demonstrate their boldness. And conversely, remove yourself physically from those who encourage you to wallow in your excuses and explanations. Keep your immediate field of energy free of contamination. Drop the contaminated people in your life, and you know who they are that are contaminated that's ruining your life. Get rid of them. And find someone who really cares for, for your well-being. Number nine, have a sense of humor. I have laughed just about every day of my life. I find humor in everything. You have to laugh at yourself and with others. What a boring life without being able to laugh at your trials and tribulations. It's just good for the soul. And number 10, <coughs> life is too short to wake up with regrets. As the old adage says, love the people who treat you right, forget about the ones who don't. Believe everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said life would be easy. They just promised it would most likely be worth it. And in closing, if you heard one thing I said tonight that makes you think it was worth the effort to prepare the speech. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift. Make today a good day. And it's been a great being with you tonight. And thank you for the opportunity to come speak before you. Thank you. Please join me again in thanking Mayor Tuggle for being with us today as our speaker. Thank you, Mayor. I now invite Ms. Sheila Regan, Vice President for Academic Affairs, to join me to assist with the conferral of the degrees and presentation of diplomas. I now ask the candidates for graduation to please stand. President Kinlaw, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you these candidates for graduation. I certify that these persons have fulfilled the graduation requirements for their respective programs of study as prescribed by the college and the North Carolina Community College system and recommend that you confer upon them the certificates, diplomas, and degrees for which they have qualified. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rockingham Community College and under the statutes governing community colleges in the state of North Carolina, I hereby confer upon you the appropriate certificate, diploma, or associate degree with, with all of the rights, honors, responsibilities, and, pr and privileges pertaining thereto as graduates of Rockingham Community College. With the exception of the first row to my left, the graduates may be seated. The graduates will come forward as they are directed and names are called. The chair of our board of trustees will greet each graduate. Each graduate will also receive an RCC pen from the Rockingham Community College Foundation. Please note that some graduates are receiving certificates and diplomas or diplomas and degrees. Individual names are called at the time the graduate receives the hire of the credentials. I ask the audience to respect the solemnity of this ceremony and treat all graduates with dignity and respect during this aspect of the ceremony. Please refrain from outward expressions that may cause the next graduate's name not to be heard. Because space is limited and in order not to impede the movement of graduates, we ask family and friends not to come to the front for photographs. Now let the graduates come forward as directed. I present to you those who are receiving certificates in air conditioning, heating and refrigeration technology, air conditioning and refrigeration, Walter Arturo Guerrero. In computer integrated machining, essential computer integrated machining fundamentals, William Tyler Lipford.
Welding Technology, Tanner Scott Brame. Stephen Robert Rutherford. Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration Technology, Jeffrey Nehemiah Hearn, graduating with honors. Thomas H. Neighbors II, High Honors. Those are recipients of diplomas. Also receiving diplomas in practical nursing. Sarah Elizabeth Billings, Dean's List. Tricia Lynn Davis. Emily Brooke Eggleston. Jessica Watson Garrett, Dean's List. Avery Simone Hands, graduating with high honors, 4.0 GPA. Tara Renee Isley, Dean's List. Jacqueline Marlisha Lewis, Dean's List. Tanya Manley, Honors. Jenny Marie Orr, Honors. Mason Cherie Peters. Tasha LaQuale Russell. Deborah Alicia Deneen Ware. For diplomas in surgical technology, Courtney Ann Barnett, Dean's List. Darnell Edwin Benjamin. Brooke Nicole Bird, Honors. Tori L. Cozart. <laughs> Ashley Marie Dabbs, High Honors. Sierra Victoria Espinoza. Jennifer Carol Evans, Dean's List. Chelsea Nicole French. Tara Danielle Lucas. Diana Lealoha Martin. Asias W. Nita, honors. Kayla Rebecca Orr. Casey Petty. Sydney Lauren Shropshire. Nicole Wild Frazier. Morgan Nicole Williams, Dean's List. Patty Lucas Bondurant, Criminal Justice Technology. Candace Annette Stanley, Honors. Early Childhood Education, Brittany Creech, High Honors. Akila Denise Scales. Electrical Electronics Technology, Ben Griffin, Jr., High Honors. Medical Office Administration, Cecilia Savala Armenta. Margaret Elizabeth Peel, Honors. Kim Rebecca Severance. Office Administration, Tracy Michelle Coe, High Honors. Associate in Arts degree, 
Rebecca Joy Brown Johnson, Dean's List. Alexis Tequana Galloway. Jennifer Renee Sossaman, Honors. Judith Caroline Webster, High Honors. Zachary Wade Wilson. Associate in Science degree, Selena Ann Dillard, High Honors. Tanya L. Glass, Honors. Antonio Felipe Lopez. With the summer 2017 graduating class, please stand. Graduates, the tassel on your mortar board is currently on the right, which is the traditional location for students who have not completed their degree. Now that your degree has been conferred, you, name, conferred, you may now turn your tassel so that it is on the left side of your mortar board. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Rockingham Community College's summer graduating class of 2017. Please stand and applaud our graduates. <clears throat> Mrs. Margaret Peel will come and offer the benediction, and following the benediction, I ask everyone to remain standing at your places until the recessional has concluded. I also remind you that a reception and diploma pickup follows in the advanced technology building adjacent to the gym. All graduates were also asked to stop by the RCC Foundation table in the advanced technology building near the diploma pickup location to receive a gift from the foundation. This concludes our commencement ceremony, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. On this, our evening of graduation, may God's blessing rest upon us. May God's love light up our lives. May hope spring from our hearts as we face tomorrow. May our days be filled with great adventures, discoveries, and even more learning. And may we live, love, and give of our best to God who sustains us and leads us. Amen. <clears throat>